No day, AAF kids. Sorry to interrupt your fun, um, but we do have to keep moving on. So this is our next lesson in our exponent and log unit. Remember, you will have a quiz on Thursday, even if we don't have school until then, because you've learned everything you need to know for exponents. The quiz is not going to have any of this new log material on it. It's only going to be on the exponent stuff that we did Monday and Tuesday. You have answers to every problem that I gave you on Monday. Um, was it Monday or Friday? I forget already. Um, the video lesson. Um, oh, that was on Friday, right? And those that was book problem. You have all those answers in the back of the book. You also have the video lesson in the notes. Um, and then you and the practice problems from there and then you also have our practice problems from the warm-up and the notes on Monday and uh, the handout practice 36 and 37 front and back all those answers are posted on Edline right now so that's what you have to get ready for the quiz on Thursday but the new objective moving on we are going to start logs, but first we will review a couple of the exponents. So this warm-up is also a review for the quiz. So if I ask you to simplify these, note this operation is multiplication, and technically what you're doing is you're using the associative property of multiplication and grouping the numbers 5 times 6, x to the negative 1 half, and x to the 1 eighth. And then, of course, you are multiplying 5 times 6 to get 30. See the base twice with multiplication in between. Write the base once and add the exponents. And notice negative 1 half I'm rewriting as negative 4 eighths. So I get 30x to the negative 3 eighths. There were no directions that I didn't, you know, didn't want negative exponents, but let's suppose that the directions had said do not leave negative exponents in your answer. Then I would have to drop the x from the numerator to the denominator, pay the toll to negatize the exponent as I crossed the fraction bar. Okay? For my problem, since there were no specific directions, I would have to get full credit for either answer this one or this one. So um, let's move on to this problem. This problem is a division. Ah, division. I see the same base twice, d and d with division in between, so I write the base once and subtract. Negative 4.3 minus negative 3.7 I see the V twice with division in between. Write the V once and subtract top exponent minus bottom exponent. So I get D plus, what is that, negative 0.6, V 3.5. Since my original problem came with decimals in the exponent, I can leave it. But as a rule, if, I've ha if I have my exponents are rational, you leave your exponents rational. If your exponents are uh, decimals, you leave your answers as decimals. Um, this is also a divi division, right? So it is actually 4x to the negative 1 half cubed divided by 9x to the one-third all to the negative three-halves. But since this is a negative exponent, with 9x to the one-half as the base, remember I can use my rules and just say this is 4 to the third x to the negative three-halves, 9 to the positive three-halves, and x to the positive 3 sixths. 
which is also one half, right? So what I did was I imagined that this negative three halves was positive because I took nine x to the one half and moved it up here and therefore had a positive three halves exponent because I crossed the, the division sign, which meant I had to distribute the power of three halves to the nine and the power of positive three halves to x to the one third, which left x to the one half. So now what do I have here? Four cubed is 64. See the base x twice with nothing but multiplication. Add the exponents. So x to the negative 3 halves plus 1 half is negative 2 halves, which is negative 1. 9 to the 3 halves, remember, is the square root of 9, which is 3 cubed, which is 27. And then I don't have a calculator, so I have to go off and multiply 64 times 27. And 7 times 4 is 28. 42, 43, 44, 8, and 12. And I got 8, 2, uh, 7, and 1. So my final result to this is... 17, 28, x to the negative 1, or 17, 28, drop the x, negatize the exponent. And since it's a positive 1, I don't have to write positive 1. This next one, again, I focused on the negative exponent first. Negative exponent means reciprocate the base. and negatize the exponent. So take the base, <coughs> excuse me, make it 32 over negative 2, 43, but to the positive 3 halves. Whoops. So 32, ah, fifths, to the positive 3 fifths, over negative 2, 43 to the positive 3 fifths. So since I don't have a calculator, I need to think of this as a radical because I don't know my 3 fifths power. So I think radical 32. And then rem remember, I can osmosis that cube to the outside over the fifth root of, gosh, I can't write today, 2, 43. And again, osmosis the cube outside. What number can you multiply five times and get 32? Two, which gets cubed. What number can you multiply five times and get 243? Maybe that's not obvious to you, but I hope you don't choose two. So you think to yourself, let's go up here. Is it three? Well, three to the fourth. Well, let's say you don't even know. Three cubed is 27. So times three. Three to the fourth would be times three. And 3 to the 5th would be that times 3. Oh, look at that. Bing, 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 bing. So 3 to the 5th is 243. So this is 3. And then again, cubed. So my final result to that is 8 over 27. Oh, oh, I dropped my negative. Here was this negative, here was a negative here. What number can you multiply five times together to get negative 243? Well, isn't it true? Down, isn't this still true, though, if I have a negative with it? Right? Is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I know that's 243 by multiplication, but let's check the signs. A negative times a negative is a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive, but times the last negative is a negative. So that meant that this negative 3 was cubed, which meant this 27 was negative. But remember with the ratio, you can put the 27 here at the denominator, you can put it up with the numerator, or you can put it out front, which is generally the most common. 
All right, <clears throat> let's move on. Logarithms in your notes. So logarithms, most commonly called logs for short, is notice that when you take logs out of here, this word kind of looks like arithmetic, right? And that's, there's a reason for that. First, let me just give you the definition. Since something is new, I have to define it. Okay, there's not a lot of words, right? There is just these two equations. Don't forget, I'm not misspelling if here. This is if and only if, meaning that this statement is true. If this statement is true, it guarantees that the second statement is true. But since it's a biconditional statement, it also means that if you know this statement is true, I'm also guaranteed that the following, the previous statement is true. So in other words, if statement one is true, you are guaranteed that statement two is true. Conversely, if you are given statement two, you are guaranteed that statement one is true. Right now you're saying, so what? Well, let me define what some of these um, letters mean. B stands for base. And if B stands for base over here, it has to stand for base over here, too. A is something called an argument. That might be a new vocabulary on you. Maybe, hopefully, maybe you remember it, some of it from first semester. But if A is called an argument on this side, it is still an argument over here. Now, I want you to think carefully about what's what kind of equations you have. Now, you do have an equation, right? You have an equal sign here, and you have an equal sign here. This is a log equation. Log equation. This log equation is the same thing as this equation, but what equation is this? You recognize that, don't you? That's an exponential equation. A log equation can be transformed into an equivalent exponent equation and vice versa. An exponent equation can be turned into a log equation. That's a little crazy. Oh, there's some rules. Got to give you some rules. Now, you can't question the rules. These, this is part of the definition, right? You can't question the definition. This is how logarithms are defined. In the log equation, A, the argument, must be positive. The argument must be positive. Polite pause. The base must be positive. And the base can never equal one. So let's be clear, the argument, which is right here, can never be a negative number, and it can't be zero. It can be a half, it can be three, it can be one, it can be 17, it can be a million. The base here, this number, 
must be positive, so it cannot be negative, it cannot be zero, it can be a half, it can be three-fourths, it can be seven-eighths, but it may not be one, it may be 1.1, 1 .1. it may be a million. The crazy thing is, is over here in exponential world, I have had bases be negative before, but in this situation, the base and the exponent equation is the same as the base and the log equation. That's a little confusing. The argument, or the answer in exponent world, notice both of them start with A, right? The same restrictions on this A are the same restrictions in this A. Again, weird. So, again, a clean copy of the definition. This is the definition, and you need to remember the fine print. A needs to be greater than zero, B needs to be greater than zero, B is not allowed to be one. Now let's talk about reading. I always try to, try to teach kids when they get so freaked out by logs sometimes, just read it. X is also the same thing in each equation. So if I have, right, I talked about B and I talked about A. B the base, right, base and argument logs are equal to this x, but notice that I have an x over here, but this x is what? What is this x? That x is an exponent. But by the definition, this x is the same as this x, which is an answer to what? This x is an answer to logs logs are what? Exponents. Logs are simply exponents. And you've known a lot about exponents and their rules for a long time. And I just reminded you about some rules with exponents. And we've practiced them and you'll take a quiz on them in, on a Thursday. Logs are exponents. What? Now, the sad thing for you is that if I was in class with you today, you know what we would be doing? I would be doing a handstand. I know, I know, it's devastating, right? Just picture it. We would be doing a handstand. I did not draw my legs correctly. Logs are exponents. The reason I do a handstand with this is because it's so freaking amazing, and I figured one time a long time ago that if I could just get kids to remember logs are exponents, they wouldn't be so frightened of logs. So I was like, what, if you will, if I do a handstand, will you remember? And the kids are like, yeah, I'll remember if you do a handstand. So I did one. And then, of course, I've done one every single year since. Maybe I'll do one for you tomorrow. We'll see for the next day. Anyway, let's get back to the definition. I took the exponent part away. I just took the law. I just isolated the log part of the definition. How you formally read this is log base b of a is x. Log, we say, log base b of a is x. However, that's not how I want you to read it. Since logs are, what again? Exponents. So think of logs are exponents, I want you to read this as the exponent, right? Logs are exponents. So read the exponent 
that turns the base into A is X. The exponent that turns B into A, the argument, is X. The log is the exponent that turns the base into the argument is X. Let's try this with some numbers. So, one of your skills is to be able to translate a log equation into exponents. Translate, translate logs into exponents. There is no reason to call this dipsy doodle. It was just something that happened in my head. I just thought, oh, I don't know why this is so hard. It's just like you dipsy and you doodle. I, again, I have no explanation for this, but here's what I mean. Translate. Here's a log equation. There's no variables in it. There's just a bunch of numbers. I just want you to translate, like somebody gave you a Spanish sentence and had you translate back to English. So, can you read this? What do you say here? The exponent. That turns what? 5. The exponent that turns 5 into 25 is 2. A log is an exponent. What is this 2? This 2 is an exponent. What is an exponent on? 5. And what is 5 squared? Well, it's 25, right? So here's what I call that. I say you take the 5 and dipsy it all the way across your equal sign to the exponent. 5 squared, and then you just doodle. Doodle back is 25, right? I know that makes no sense. It's just how I think. What can I say? So, I translated. Here's the log part. Logs turned into exponents. And aren't... Isn't that true? So, log 5 of 25 is 2 is the same thing as saying 5 squared is 25. And they are both true. True? True. They're the same thing. Just like writing, if you want to write 12 as 4 times 3, true? True. Log 5 of 25 is 2. 5 squared is 25. True. Let's practice some more translating. Read it. The exponent that turns 2 into 32 is 5. Logs are exponents. Translate that into an exponential, the equivalent exponential, right? Cross the language barrier. Was logs, turn it into exponents. Dipsy, doodle. Write the 2, dipsy the 5, doodle the 32. Isn't it true 2 to the 5th is 32? How about this one? Dipsy, doodle. 1 half, dipsy up the negative 6, and doodle the rest, equals 64. 
Is it, oh, this is not as clear. Is it true that one half to the negative six is 64? Well, remember what a negative exponent means? Reciprocate the base. So, and then negatize the exponent. Negatize a negative means a positive. Isn't this true? Well, yeah, it is. So you, could you go back here? Could you go the other way? The exponent that turns what base? Two into what? Is not negative six, what is it? Right. So see, you can go both ways. You can translate from logs to exponents, right? You can translate from logs to exponents, or you can take exponents and rewrite them as logs. That is your objective. translate logs to exponents and vice versa. Your next objective is to not translate but to solve. In order to solve a log equation, which means there's going to be variables, the objective, the skill that you need to do it is translating. Because after all, you are going to be much more comfortable in exponent world than you are in log world. So if somebody gives you a log equation, and by the way, this is going to be, there's lots of log equations, and this is type 1. Type 1 is solve for the log. Step 1 is translate. So notice this is a log equation. Can you read this and give me the answer for x? I think you can. And let me tell you that even though I told you step one is translate, the prequel step is to read. If you can read a log equation and answer it, don't do any work. The exponent that turns 5 into 25 is what exponent? What is the exponent that turns 5 into 25? 2. Let's pretend that you didn't know that, though. If you could not read an answer, so prequel step is can you read an answer? Yes, then do it. No, then go to step 1. Oops. Step 1 translate from logs to exponents. So I dipsy, I doodled, and I wrote 5 to the x is equal to 25. Now again, I know you could just read this and answer 2, but remember, these problems are going to get more complicated. So this would be one without a calculator. I want you to think to yourself, self, this is 5 to an unknown. It's equal to something that would be great if it was also a power of 5. Can you rewrite the right side so that it has the same base as the left? And the answer to that is yes. 5 to the x is equal to 5 to the 2, 5 to the second. This is a powerful statement right here. What's on the left is the same as what's on the right. Therefore, you can use something called the ignore property. Use the ignore property. You, since the base is the same, you can ignore it, and x is equal to 2, which again is duh. I knew that way back at the prequel step, but these steps will not change. So prequel step, can you read an answer? Yes. No, go to step 1. Step 1 is translate from logs to exponents. Step 2 is rewrite to the same base. Step three is the ignore property. Now, once you use the ignore property, you may have to then solve an Algebra 1 equation or Algebra 2 equation. Here we did not. x was just equal to 2. We didn't have an equation or anything to solve, I should say. 
All right, let's do some more. How about this one? 2 to the x is 32. Can you just read it? What is the exponent that turns 2 into 32? The exponent that turns 2 into 32 is what exponent? Right. The answer is 5. I can just read an answer x is equal to 5. Let's pretend I can't. If I couldn't, remember, I go to step 1. Translate. So I dipsy, I doodle, and I say 2, dipsy up the exponent that I'm looking for, doodle the rest. Step two, ask if you can rewrite to the same base. The left side is 2 to the x. Can you rewrite 32 such that it is 2 to something? And the answer is yes. Yes. 32 is 2 to the fifth. Step three, since you have the same base, Use the ignore property, and x must be equal to 5. And step 4 is solve. Of course, there was nothing to solve. What I forgot to tell you, step 5, anytime you're doing an answer like this and getting a log answer, you need to check the definition to see if you've broken any rules. You were solving for x, which is solving for the log, right? I'm solving for the exponent, which is the log, right? There were no restrictions on that. No definition restrictions. That's called foreshadowing. Try another one. So I'm still. This is still type one. I'm solving for the log, and remember, logs are exponents. So you're actually solving for an exponent. I always tried to read it first. The exponent that turns a half into 64. The exponent that takes a half and repeatedly multiplies it and turns it into a bigger number. Hmm. Remember, exponentiation is just repeated multiplication, right? So one half to something is 64. Well, one half to the first is one half. One half to the second is one fourth. How can I repeatedly multiply one half and get a number bigger than one? Hmm. So let's dipsy doodle this. Right? Step one. One half, dipsy up the ep, x, doodle the rest. Step two, can you get to the same base? And here's something. Before, I was saying, hey, this is one half to the x. This is 64. Instead of thinking of 64 as a base of one half, how about you think as a, pow as a base of 2, right? What is 64? 2 to the what? It's not 2 to the 5th, it's 2 to the 6th, right? Well, this is a base of 1 half. What if I really, really, really want it to be a base of 2? How can you legally turn 1 half into 2 with this exponent of x? Reciprocate the base, negatize the exponent. We usually are using that the other way, to get rid of a negative exponent. 
but this time, take a minute to convince yourself that one half to the positive x is the same as two to the negative x. And now, if you have two to the negative x is equal to two to the sixth, can I use the ignore property? I can. Therefore, negative x must be equal to six. Right, step three was the ignore property. And now step four is solve what I have. x is equal to negative six. Oh, that makes sense. This exponent needs to be negative in order to be an exponent that makes one half bigger than one. I hope that makes sense to you. Oh, did I check? Check the definition. Oh, remember, I don't have to because there's no restrictions. There's no definition restrictions on the answer to a log. So let's do type 2. So this time, I'm going to give you a log equation, but you're going to solve, which means you have variables, for an argument. Now, uh-oh, the argument had restrictions. Do you remember the definition restriction on the argument? Was that the argument had to be positive. It couldn't be a negative number, and it couldn't be zero. Step one is translate, just like before. That's why you learn translation first. So notice where the variable is here, right? In type one, the variable was across the equal sign. This time, the variable is in place of the argument. So again, I try to read. The exponent that turns three into something is two. Remember, logs are exponents. Logs are exponents. This two is an exponent. And it's an exponent on what? Three. Uh, so what happens when you put an exponent of two on three? Don't you get nine? So again, if you can read it and just answer it, this is one of those times where you don't have to show work. You can just read it and answer it. I'm going to pretend that I can't. So step one is translate. Three squared is x. And unlike the last type, this is me just learning exponent rules, right? I can evaluate exponents. This one is duh. x is equal to nine. So step three I'm sorry, step two is just use exponent rules. Step three, solve if you have to. Like you might have an expression here that is more complicated than just x. And step four, check definition restrictions. Is nine a positive number? Yes. So your answer is 9. Let's try another one. The exponent that turns 7 into something is negative. If an exponent is negative, it's going to take my base 7 and turn it into something smaller than 7, right? Right? I already figured that out. Remember, I try to read it first. Let's pretend, though, that I didn't have success reading it. So, whoops. Step one, I always try my prequel step. I try to read. The exponent that turns seven into something is negative two. Right? I'm still not sure. So I go on to step one, which is translate. Write down the base, dipsy up the exponent, doodle the rest. And then use your exponent rules. A negative exponent means reciprocate the base and negatize the exponent. 
1 squared is 1 and 7 squared is 49. And there's my answer. Oh, I got to check my definition. Is 1 over 29 greater than 0 because I was solving for an argument? Yes. So 1 over 49 is my answer. Next. Step one, the base one-half, dipsy up the exponent, doodle the rest. Evaluate, negative exponent means reciprocate the base, negatize the exponent. Since that's an argument, ask yourself if A is greater than zero, check. 16 is my answer. Type 3. You're still solving, which means you're going to have a variable to isolate, but this time you're solving for the base. Now remember there was definition restrictions, right? Your definition restrictions on the base were that the base had to be greater than zero, and what else? Not equal one. Step one, just like it is with all of them, is to translate. Again, with the understanding that you may be able to just read it and answer. So again, here we are with our 25 and 2. The exponent that turns something into 25 is 2. The exponent that turns something into 25 is 2. Remember, this is the exponent. There's an exponent I put on something to turn it into 25. Well, duh, it's 5, right? If you can just read it, you say yes. You just, if I read yes, x is equal to 5. Let's pretend that I can't read it and answer it. Go to step 1. Step 1, translate. Dipsy the 2 onto the x and doodle the rest. Now, this looks like an Algebra 1 problem with how many solutions, right? I've been yelling at you all year that if you're solving a quadratic, how many answers do you have? Two. However, this was not a quadratic, right? This is not a quadratic. This is a log equation. So, I'm going to show you a different technique to solve this to avoid getting two answers, which I should get with a quadratic, but that I don't want with logs. Ever since you've been in pre-algebra, you've been trying to get x by itself, right? And when doing a quadratic, somebody was like, oh, just do the square root. And then I'd be like, no, but don't forget the plus and minus square root. Well, how about we just avoid that altogether? Now that we know that radicals are the same as fractional powers, check out this magic. Remember, I can do whatever I want to one side of an equation as long as I do the same thing to the other. So look at what I did to the left side. To the left side, I changed it by raising whoops, the left side to the power of one half. Now, of all the powers in all the world, I chose a half because it was the reciprocal of two. Now, what happens when you multiply 2 and 1 half? Don't you get x to the first? Now, remember, that's just like when somebody said, oh, um, what if you have uh, 7x is equal to uh, 14, right? Divide both sides by 7. Why did you divide by 7? Because you were trying to get rid of the 7 and get 1x to the first, right? Well, over here, I had x squared. I wanted x to the first. Well, if I raise x squared to a power of one-half, don't I get x to the first? The golden rule of algebra. But since I raise the left side to a power of one-half, I must do the same to the other side. The golden rule of algebra. And notice when I do that, 25 to the one-half is just 5, not the square root, not plus and minus 5. I'm, re I'm reminded 
that I just get 5. Now, check. So step 1 was Dipsy Doodle. Step 2 was raise both sides to the reciprocal of the power. Our power happened to be 2, so the reciprocal was 1 half. And then of course we also had to do the same on the other side. That's the golden rule of algebra. Step 3, solve. Now we didn't have to solve, we just got x is equal to 5. Step 4, check definition restrictions or busters. Since x is a base, the base needs to be greater than 0 and can't be 1, so 5 is okay. Now, you're going to say, I don't want to do that, Ms. Getz. I just wanted to get x squared is equal to 25. Fine, but if you get x squared is equal to 25, you best tell me you know that x is equal to plus and minus 5, and then when you check your definition, you have to realize, oops, base must be greater than 0, therefore x is only equal to 5. Don't you dare go from x squared is equal to 25 to just one answer. Because the solution to x squared is equal to 25 has two solutions. The only way you get one solution is if you show me this step, this prequel step. Okay? I know that's picky, but I'm trying to make a point. Try another one. So, my the variable is the base. So this is type three. So I dipsy doodle. So write your base. Doodle the exponent. I'm sorry, dipsy the exponent. Look at me not keep my dipsy doodle straight. X to the fifth is 1 over 32. I'm going to write x to the fifth is equal to 1 over 32, but I'm going to raise both sides to the reciprocal of the power. Since the power is 5, over here the reciprocal power is 1 fifth. And I'm going to raise this side, but the golden rule of algebra says I have to go over here see the base once with multiple exponents, you get x to the first is equal to 1 over 32 to the 1 fifth, which means you have 1 to the 1 fifth, which is 1, because 1 to any power is 1, and 32 to the 1 fifth, which is really the fifth root of 32, so x is equal to 1 half. Check your definition. I'm solving for the base, needs to be greater than 0, can't be 1. Whoops. Check. My answer is 1 half. Is it true? Let's check this. Is it true? Let's go over here. That log 1 half of 132 is 5? Is that true? Well, let's dipsy doodle this and find out. Dipsy, one half to the fifth. Doodle. Is that true? Yeah, it is. Do another one. The exponent that turns something into 1 is 4. All right, so let's dipsy doodle this. Something sounds a little weird, doesn't it? The exponent that turns 1. Hmm, wait, okay, I'm a little, I'm a little confused, but let's, let me write this out. So I take 8x, I dipsy up 4 and then I doodle the rest. So
So x to the fourth is equal to one. So I can just do this. That one that's making me uncomfortable. X multiplying by one, hmm. Well, I'm just gonna keep going. Remember, I take my power and reciprocate. So I put one fourth here, but golden rule of algebra says I have to do one fourth there. So this is x to the first because four times a fourth is one, and one to one fourth is one. So I got an answer, but then I need to check. I was solving for a base. The base must be positive. Oh, wait a second. The base is not allowed to be one, but my answer was one. What does that mean? I did algebra. I followed all my rules. I did my steps, and I did the last check, and it turns out that I found something that couldn't be true. Therefore, this log equation has no solution, even though it is true that 1 to the 4th, isn't it true though that if you put 1 here, here's what's weird, isn't it true that 1 to the 4th is 1? This is true, but I'm not allowed to do it? Er? What? Confused. All right. Sometimes you have to wait for understanding. Just sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. So let's just back up for a minute and accept the fact that we have a definition and we have to work with the, within the definition. So going back to the definition that I was working under. My definition of logs, if you're starting with a log equation, definition, you signed up, right? It's like you joined the log club, and the log club says arguments must be positive, bases must be positive, and bases can't be one. That's what we're stuck with. So, look at this statement. Which rule am I breaking? I'm breaking the base rule, right? Here's my base, and my base is negative, which is a no-no. Let's pretend I don't understand that it's a no-no, and I don't want it to be a no-no. So I dipsy and I doodle, and I get negative 4 to the 1 half is supposed to equal x, but what, what's the deal there? Right? You know that 1 half is actually what? The square root. And what's the square root of a negative? A non-real number. So logs don't want to set up a situation where you could get a non-real answer, right? Because we are, the set that we're working with in the vast majority of applications is real numbers. So why define logs and give some situations where a log might give you a non-real answer? So they just care, took care of that with a definition and said, you know what? I know sometimes negative bases will be fine, but since a negative base with a one-half or any other even radical will not be fine, we're going to say no negative bases ever. And that's just what was decided a long time ago. Since there, we want to be working with real numbers, I don't want to set up a situation where logs might give me a non-real answer, even though sometimes it will give me real. If any time I'm going to get a non-real answer, I'm going to eliminate that situation. And that's what they did. So they said bases always have to be positive. Now you know why. All right, so that's one reason. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to give you some tests like this, and I'm going to give you a problem like this, and I'm going to expect you to tell me that there is no solution, but for full credit, Tell me no solution, but for full credit, tell me why. In other words, tell me what part of the definition got busted. If you forget to tell me why, that's like minus one or minus a half, but I, I am testing you on the definition. 
And you don't have to write b is greater than zero. You can just say, uh, you don't have to remember the terminology. You can just say the, you know, I get a non-real answer. Well, no, somehow you've got to refer to the definition. You know, bases aren't allowed to be negative. However you want to state it, but you have to refer somehow to what part of the definition of logs breaks this rule. Here's something else. There's another thing. What rule am I breaking for the definition? This time, the rule that I'm breaking is the argument, right? The argument is supposed to be greater than zero, and yet I've made an argument of zero. Let's see what's wrong with this. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to dipsy doodle this. I'm going to write down the base, dipsy up the exponent, and say it's doodled to the rest. Now ask yourself a question. What number can you raise 4 to to get zero? Remember, exponentiation is, multi is multi repeated multiplication of 4. So 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times... How many times can you multiply 4 together and get zero? Um, nothing, right? You can't raise a number that isn't zero to zero, you know, to, an, uh, to a, a number. Even zero. What happens if the exponent is zero? 4 to the zero is what? 1. So there's no way this can be true. So this also is no solution. Tell me no solution, but tell me why. This time you say no solution, and you say the argument must be greater than zero. Or you can say the argument is zero and that's not allowed. You know, whatever you want to say. I can't raise four to an exponent and get zero. Therefore, no solution. Argument can't be, must be greater than zero. How about this one? What rule am I breaking? So this one was negative base, not allowed. This one was zero argument, not allowed. This one is base equal to one, also not allowed. So let's see what the deal is with that. We're going to dipsy doodle it, write down one, raise it to an exponent, and get two. What happens when you repeatedly multiply one? I don't care how many times. One times one times one times one times one times da da da. That won't ever be what? So, therefore, this problem has no solution. Don't forget, tell me no solution. and then tell me why. The base is not allowed to be 1. Now remember, if this, if I change, if I went back here and changed this, right, to the argument, well sure, 1 to the x is equal to 1. I do get a true statement then, but if this argument is anything other then one, it doesn't work. And so again, why would you set up a situation with logs? If you're going to define logs, why set up part of it such that you'll get nonsense uh, for any other number but one in this case? That's why the base can't be one. All right. This one the first example was an example of type 2, right, where you were solving for the base. So again, base must be greater than 0. This one was uh, an example of type 1, where you were um, solving for the, um, I'm sorry, this time you were solving for the argument. So that's type 2. This one you were solving uh, for the log or the exponent, which was type 1 but you had an argument that was bad, because your argument must be zero. 
I mean, argument must be greater than zero. This was another type one where you were solving for the log or solving for the exponent, and it broke the rule that the base is not allowed to equal one. Right, I didn't do one, let's see, uh, the only thing I didn't do, I didn't do one with a negative argument, right? So how about this? How about log four is equal to uh, negative two is equal to x, right? How would you dipsy doodle that, right? Four to the negative two is equal to x. What the heck is wrong with that, right? X is just equal to one sixteenth. What the heck? Why isn't the argument allowed to be zero? Hmm. Well, there are some things that you just have to wait for. Love ya. Don't forget to do your homework. Tomorrow we'll do some more with logs. And don't forget your quiz is on Thursday.